Hello everyone, this is Jason for Primetime Aquatics. And in this video, we are going to be taking a closer look inside of our aquariums. That's right, we are in the Aquarium Science Series. In this video, I want to talk about why it is so important to have stable water parameters and how fluctuations in water parameters can lead to changes in ammonia and nitrite concentrations. And the next thing you have an ammonia spike inside your tank. And this all has to do with the beneficial bacteria in our tanks. We've often heard it said that stable water parameters are so important for our fish, but they may be even more important for the beneficial bacteria in our aquariums that really serves as the foundation for a healthy ecosystem. And so we're going to be taking a closer look at that today. The paper that I am showing you is something we've looked at in previous videos, but there were some things that we didn't actually touch upon that were really important for us to further understand how microbes contribute to an overall healthy ecosystem. And so, by the way, if you want to research this more, everything that I use in this video, all of the links will be in the description below if you want to read a little bit more about it. So a couple things. I think it's really important that we just review one thing real fast, and that is the nitrification process. And so one of the things that we talk about in the aquarium hobby is the nitrogen cycle and how it's so important to cycle our tanks. And that language is a little bit misleading because we're not actually cycling the tank. What we're doing is we are encouraging certain microbes to go through a process called nitrification. It's actually just one half of the nitrogen cycle. So what does that mean? If we look at this paper, once again, just as a real quick review, we're not going to spend a lot of time here, but fish produce ammonia. That's the NH3. That's a waste product. That ammonia is very toxic for fish. In fact, for new fish keepers, that's one of the primary reasons why fish die in a new aquarium is because the ammonia builds up and it does all kinds of bad things to them. And then the fish die. Now, the ammonia can be converted to something called nitrite. That's this NO2. Microbes do that conversion. One of the most predominant is nitrosomonas. And we see a bunch of other genera right here Nitrosococcus, Nitrosuspira, uh, Nitrosolobus. So there's lots of different types of microbes that can convert, basically eat the ammonia and convert it to nitrite. Now that nitrite is still dangerous. And so down here we see the chemical equation for the other part of the nitrification process. And that is microbes like Nitrobacter convert nitrite, which is dangerous to fish as well, into nitrate. And the nitrate is far less dangerous and what winds up happening is we do our water changes, or maybe we have lots of plants that help control the amount of nitrate in an aquarium. All right, so what does this have to do with potential ammonia spikes by not keeping our aquarium water parameters stable? Well, it turns out that these microbes are sensitive to things like oxygen concentration, pH, water hardness, and water temperature. And so it's really important that we keep these water parameters stable so that we get a healthy flora of microbes growing in our aquarium. So now what I want to do is I want to take you to the important part of this particular paper, and that is how our microbes that we just talked about are linked to pH and water hardness. Now there are some words that we see here on the screen, and I'm going to get back to this in a moment because it's important. But one of the things I want to show you is the figure here where we've got a couple of graphs that show us just how important pH is to the microbes that we depend upon for the nitrification process. On the left-hand side here, we've got nitrosomonas. And as we saw above, this is one of the genera of bacteria that are really important for converting, converting ammonia to nitrite. So they're doing the first part of the process. And what we see here is the dependency on nitrosomonas on pH. And we can see that there is an optimal pH range, as there is in most cases in nature. These microbes do pretty good from a pH of as high as 8 to as low as right around a pH of 7. So right around between 7 and 8, they do a great job of converting ammonia to nitrite. But what we can see here is a couple things. One, you get too far above a pH of 8 and the nitrosomonas really start to, to hurt a little bit. You get too much below a 7 and the drop-off is rapid in their ability to convert ammonia to nitrite. Now we look over here on the right-hand side and we see nitrobacter. Now this is the microbe, once again, that is responsible for the second half of the nitrification process, going from nitrite to nitrate. So nitrobacter is another genus of bacteria. Actually, there's 
lots of different type of nitrobacter species. And we can see here the optimal pH range for the nitrobacter is even more narrow in that it does a pretty good job of a right around a pH of around 8.2 to maybe a pH of about 7.2 or 7.3 but then it experiences a rapid drop off in the ability to convert nitrite to nitrate as the pH goes down. And in both cases, once we get down to around a pH of six and a half or so, the ability for these microbes to do, these particular species of microbes to do nitrification goes to almost zero. All right, so what does that mean for us? It means a couple things. It means when we are keeping fish and we talk about having stable water parameters for our fish, we also need that for the microbes. Now, I want to be really clear. We already talked about above that these are not the only microbes responsible for the nitrification process. And in fact, these particular genera are not the only microbes responsible for the process. I want to kind of, kind of take a side uh, road here real fast and share with you a couple other things that I found that were pretty interesting. Again, these articles will be listed in the description below. But this was, again, actually from the Applied and Environmental Microbiology uh, part of the American Society of Microbiology. And what I wanted to show you here is that nitrification and biofilm at low pH values. And they talked about, I'm not going to go through this entire article, but there were lots of microbes that they identified that could do the nitrification process at very low pHs, as low as a pH of two in some situations. So I don't want to imply that the microbes that we are presenting in this particular video are the only microbes that do nitrification. And if your pH drops below 6.5, your tank is going to crash. That isn't necessarily the case. We're going to talk about why it can be severely strained and why you may have, op may have some problems. But they are not the only microbes responsible for the nitrification process. In fact, as we scroll down here, I want to scroll down to the bottom a little bit. You're going to see, look at this chart. Now, we're not going to go through this whole thing, but you see all of these different types of microbes that they identified that were going through ammonia to nitrite. All right, so they were using the ammonia converting to nitrite. And then down here, we've got other microbes that were doing nitrite to nitrate. So I share this with you only to say that these are not the only microbes. And one other thing I want to share before we get back to our original article there are other types of bacteria that may, in a freshwater system, may be even more important than the traditional Nitrosomonas and Nitrobacter. Methama archaeota, this is an archaea type of bacteria, so the archaea live in pretty extreme environments, generally speaking. But these microbes, too, are known to be important in a freshwater aquarium for the nitrification process. Okay, so now that we have that, we know that these are not the only bacteria responsible for nitrification, that there are others. Here's why this matters. For those of you who want to achieve a biotope type aquarium, let's say your water is a seven and a half, because that on these particular graphs that we're looking at, seven and a half is pretty darn good for both the nitrosomonas, nitrobacter. And by the way, for the other bacteria, the archaea that I just mentioned, their water parameters are roughly the same. They do really well at around a seven and a half. So let's just say, let's just say you've got a pH of seven and a half and your water hardness is right around 10 degrees or 170 parts per million, which by the way is also pretty good for your bacteria for the nitrification process. But let's say, you know what? You want to start breeding wild caught epistogramma. And so what you want to do is you want to decrease the pH. You want to decrease the water hardness. Let's say you do that by using RO water. And now your pH is all the way down in that six to six and a half range. Guess what? All of the microbes, or mo many of the microbes that were established in your aquarium were the types of microbes that could do really well with nitrification at seven and a half. They do almost nothing at a pH of six to six and a half. And so what winds up happening is you kind of sort of crash your cycle a little bit and you get a mini cycle going in your tank where you get an ammonia spike. Now that can create some problems onto itself, which we're going to address in a second. What if you want to go the other direction? I hear this all the time as well. You know, my pH is pretty close to a 7.0 or maybe it's a 6.5. And, and I really love African cichlids. And so what I would like to do is increase my pH. How do I do that? I say, okay, well, add aragonite. You can add crushed coral. You can add uh, cichlid uh, buffers that are sold on the market. You can use pH up. You can use pH down. I don't necessarily recommend those products, but the, the buffering salts, the aragonite, the crushed coral will all help you 
stabilize a pH that's going to be a little bit higher. But you still have the same problem. Because if your aquarium was originally right around a pH of 6.5, and, and the microbes that were living in that aquarium were best suited for that environment at a pH of 6.5, guess what you've done? You've now created an environment where those microbes can no longer do nitrification. Ammonia to nitrite, nitrite to nitrate. Now what you have to do is wait for the microbes that are in the aquarium that might be able to do the nitrification process at that higher pH with that higher water hardness, but that may take a while. And in the meantime, you get an ammonia spike. Now, I want to share with you one other thing. I want to go back up to the words here when it comes to the pH and alkalinity uh, section of this paper because there's something else going on here that can really help some of you who are trying to cycle a new tank. And so we hear this all the time, or I hear this all the time. I'm trying to cycle this new tank and it just, it's taking forever and I don't know why. A lot of times I think this is happening for people who have a lower pH with a lower water hardness. Now here's why. Here they talk about the importance and they link bicarbonate, which is your KH, with the ability of microbes to do the nitrification process. And this is, while this is an older paper, the same numbers have been supported by newer research. And what they go on to say is there was a model developed that indicates that you need basically 8.64 milligrams per liter or parts per million of bicarbonate that will be utilized for each milligram per liter of ammonia nitrogen oxidized. In other words, you're consuming some of that KH, you're consuming some of that alkalinity when ammonia concentrations are high. What that means is if you've got a an aquarium with a lower pH and low water hardness already, and now you get an ammonia spike, a lot of the microbes that are going to eat that ammonia and convert it to nitrite, and later nitrite to nitrate, are also consuming your KH. Guess what that does? As the inhabitants of that aquarium start to produce waste products, those waste products tend to lower the pH, and that's going to have a more significant impact on pH in general. And so you wind up with this positive feedback loop where you get an ammonia spike, the microbes are using the ammonia, they're eating the ammonia, but also consuming some of that bicarbonate in doing so. Your water is now less buffered, and so increases in waste products from your fish now lower the pH even more. And that can be one of the reasons why it takes so long to get some aquarium cycled. All right, so let's summarize what we've learned today. We already know that a stable pH, stable water parameters, stable temperatures are really good for our fish. But just as importantly, if not more importantly, it's good for the microbes that are providing that service in an ecosystem within our aquarium. They need that stable pH. If the pH goes too low or if it goes too high, you change the types of microbes that are going to be necessary inside of your aquarium, inside that ecosystem to do the nitrification process. And that can create ammonia spikes that have to be dealt with. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like this sort of thing, check out the videos in the upper and lower right hand corner. They should give you a little bit more information about aquarium sciences. We'll see you in the next one.